when you talk about dairy management, it's all about the aspects of keeping the dairy animal so that they become productive. In dairy management, we have one which is called feeding management, we have housing management, we have breeding management. But if you allow your animal to graze throughout the day, you are very sure productivity will be very low. You cannot formulate all the feed and say this is for dairy animals. We have dry animals, we have lactating, we have pregnant, we have calves, and all of them, they have their own feeds. And the importance when you are doing these records is for evaluation. Are we making a profit or a loss? Dairy farming is a good enterprise. It's easy to start. It's all about the interest. I'm Aruse Magdalene from Eldore Technical Training Institute. You're watching Emerging Business. Thank you so much. I'm Aruse Magdalene from Eldore Technical Training Institute. Uh, I'm a tutor. I teach animal production and extension services. When you talk about dairy management, it's all about the aspects of keeping the dairy animal so that they become productive. And in dairy management, we have one which is called feeding management. We have housing management. We have breeding management, among others. When you talk about the feeding management, we ensure that we feed our animals using what you call TMR, total mixed rations, so that these are animals will become productive. And when I talk about total mixed rations, it's all about the five feed components. That's carbohydrates, the minerals, the vitamins, the protein, the ravages, and the carbohydrates. So once you plus water, once you feed your animals using all those feeds, we are very sure your animals will become productive. And when it comes to this feeding management, before you feed your animals, make sure you consider what you call the body weight. And the amount of feed you're supposed to give your animal in a day is 3% of its body weight. So you're going to take your weighing band, you measure the weight of the animal, so that you know how much of the feed am I going to give this animal. If it is protein, carbohydrates, like take an example, your animal is weighing 200 kilograms. 3% of 206 kilograms. So, so that animal should eat 3 kilograms in a day. So 6 kilograms, meaning that in the morning there is a proportion you are supposed to give, mid-morning and in the evening. As you feed this animal, ensure that you have what you call a, a feeding intervals. Allow this animal to feed, to rest, for it to regurgitate, for its, the feeds to be used in the body for production of the, uh, what we need, that is milk. That's what you call the feeding intervals. But if you allow your animal to graze throughout the day, you are very sure productivity will be very low. We have health management. When you talk about the health management, you're looking at the health aspect of an animal, the well, well-beingness of the animal. And that is all about the diseases. Do you vaccinate your animals? Do you ensure that the area your animal is is clean? Because if an animal is affected by diseases, eventually that animal will be having a lot of stresses which affect productivity come to housing management. As you can see, we have various structures of our dairy animals and we have group based on various groups. So when it comes to housing management, we usually ensure that we house our animal so that when there is too much sunshine, they are not getting stressed. Too much rainfall, no stress. Then we have what we call the breeding management. So in the aspect of the breeding management, we usually ensure that we select the best breeds which are uh, suitable for production, for, for productivity of the milk. Like, if I want high milk productivity, I usually ensure that I select the best bull that give me high production of the milk. When it comes to breeding management, again, I usually look at what you call the methods of breeding. Like one, we have the use of AI, we have the use of embryo transfer, we have the use of natural method, like I select the best bull. Yeah, and you, as, as you deal with this thing known as breeding management, first of all, look which trait am I going to improve in my dairy animal. Is it the size of the udder? Is it the body size of that dairy animal? You see? Yeah, exactly, we have various breeds of our animals. Like one, we have Frisian. If you want to determine a Frisian, it is usually black and white in color, having white socks, white forehead, yeah, and black patches. And then we have what you call the Jersey, we have the Gansies, we have, uh, we have the Frisian, among others. Those are the breeds that we have. The first thing is what you call the productivity of an animal. Like if for the Frisian, uh, you're going to look how much of the milk is going to produce. Like Frisian usually give us around 40 liters in a day. Jersey, I give us 35 liters in a day. And Gansey. 
after that productivity of animal it's all about what we call the farmer's preferences and choices so what the farmer likes is the is what he or she is going to adopt and the other thing is what we call the adaptation in terms of climatic condition a good example is an animal like a fresh and a fresh and you cannot take it in arid and semi-arid areas it will not survive because of extreme weather conditions again fresh and is a uh, more susceptible to diseases so friction you cannot take it in an area where there is that prevalence of diseases but again maybe the area you are keeping that friction is not in good condition in terms of environmental if it is very dirty it is more susceptible to diseases so it depends on how that farmer is going to to take care about the animal it depends again on what you call the skills friction requires a lot of skills yeah and the knowledge so if you don't have the knowledge and the skills based on dairy something like a friction will be much difficult for you to handle but something like uh, jersey and the ganses at least they are, are well adapted to the environment and they are not they do not require a lot of skills yeah Actually, it depends on what you call the lifespan of the feed. Like if you are dealing with what you call the dairy meal, it has what you call the expiry date. For the something like the silage that I've said in terms of feed storage, it doesn't have the lifespan so long as it is under good storage. It is under good storage. If it is a hay, if you are storing in a good store, that is not, there is no rain that falls on it or water that can cause what you call aflatoxins. Yeah? So, as far as the storage is okay, the feed can go for a very longer time. Like our, our scenario in the school farm, we still have the silage for last time and we are still yet going to feed our animals. So I usually encourage the farmers actually uh, to ensure that they formulate their own feeds. That's to reduce the cost and maximize the profit. If you go and just buy the direct formulated feed, it is more expensive. But if I just go and buy the, the feeds, uh, the feed components, I buy the protein like soya bean, I buy the grains, I buy the wheat, and then I formulate by myself. It is more cheaper compared to buying the well-formulated feeds. It is not that much technical actually. It's all about the knowledge. A farmer first of all should have the knowledge. Say so that when it, it comes to formulation of the feed, he knows what he or she requires to formulate, in which ratio, and for which classes of animals. You cannot formulate all the feed and say this is for dairy animals. We have dry animals, we have lactating, we have pregnant, we have calves, and all of them they have their own feeds. So first of all is the background knowledge. Okay, when it comes to records, uh, we have various types of records in the dairy section. We have the feeding records, we have the breeding records, we have the health records, we have the financial records among others. So when it comes to these records, in terms of keeping them, we can keep them in terms of hard copies that should be updated daily. We can keep them in softwares like the use of computers so you can keep so that you can be updating daily. And the importance when you have in these records is for evaluation. Are we making a profit or a loss? If this animal uh, again is for future reverence, like breeding record, maybe I serve my animal today and the father or what you call the sire is James and the mother is Dorcas. So when it comes to next time, I'm not supposed to do what you call in breeding. So the record is the one to give me that clear information who is the father and the mother, the sire and the dam of this. So that is important of records. When it comes to feeding records again, you're supposed to be evaluating which kinds of the feed am I supposed to give to the dry cow, lactating cows, in which ratios? Yeah. Productivity records and the sales record. How much of the milk am I supposed to sell in a day? Or how much of the milk this cow is producing in a day? At the end of that lactation period, from the time it calves down up to the time it dries, is it 1800 liters and above or it is lower? If it is lower, you're supposed to remove that animal from the breeding stock because it's just consuming the feed. It's not productive. Yeah. Okay, my advice to someone who's watching me right now. Dairy farming is a good enterprise. It's easy to start. It's all about the interest. So if you want to know more about the dairy farming, we welcome you to Eldore Technical Training Institute. Where we can equip you with the full knowledge at only 500 shilling per session. My quick advice to a farmer who needs to start uh, this uh, dairy farming. If you're having one cow, it's very easy to manage. It's all about the interest, yeah? So if you're having that one dairy cow, just formulate your feeds, 
ensure that the, where your animal it says is a very good environment you ensure that the freedom of animals are well kept like it's free from thirst free from pain and injury free from diseases so after you have considered all those things of course your animal will become productive